welcome to the end of year two video. <laughs> kind of crazy. I can't believe we're here at the end of year two already. So um, let's see. So from last year, uh, let's see. We'll, I'll do a recap for the whole thing. We have finished everything with the M kit except for the trim tabs, uh, which we still just haven't gone back and finished redoing those. Uh, we have done everything in the wing kit except for the fuel tanks. Those we didn't finish off because we weren't exactly sure what we were going to end up going with for everything with our engine and fuel. We weren't sure if we we're going to need um, to have a return fuel line. So now that we have everything figured out with uh, the fuel injection and everything for the engine and we know what we're going to need, we can go and finish those off. Uh, and we are well into the fuselage kit and we are now in section 29 and hopefully should be finishing that up here shortly. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Before we kick things off and look at everything that's happened over the last year, a couple of quick things. First, if you've enjoyed these videos and you're planning to buy an empanage kit for any one of the Vans RV models, please consider going to plainlady.com slash referral and submitting that form to Vans when you purchase your M kit. It doesn't matter what model, it won't cost you anything extra, but Vans will send me $100 as a thank you and it really means a lot to know that y'all have enjoyed the videos and found them to be helpful. If you happen to like my t-shirts, I have some new YY planes and you can build them um, t-shirt designs that are all available on plainlady.com slash store. And if you're at all surprised to see this fuselage here behind me, uh, because you just watched the videos on YouTube, you can uh, follow along on Instagram at plain.lady or on Facebook, plain lady. And that way you'll be able to see uh, more up-to-date status of the build. It's a lot easier for me to just push out there a couple pictures to show the progress as we're doing it versus getting all the videos out. So if you're surprised by this, you might go check those out if you want to keep more up to date with the current status of our build. All right, so looking back, oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> I went back and rewatched the year one to kind of see where it was then uh, and now see where we are now. Now that we've finished the wing kit and we're here into the fuselage kit, I guess kind of looking at the two because this is one area where, again, some of you might choose to do a quick build on one or the other um, or even just deciding which to maybe do first versus second. Uh, the differences really that I found with the two kits is um, I think that the wing kit was more boring in terms of it being monotonous because you'd have like here's one wing rib and then there's like 13 of them and you're just doing the same thing on all 13. Uh, and then guess what? You have like 13 on the other side. <laughs> So you, when it was like, okay, well now where I'm deburring ribs or I'm fluting ribs, it's just like, oh, it's just, you're, you're stuck doing the same thing over and over. But it was nice because I felt like it went a lot faster. I think especially with the two of us working on it, it was an area that was very easy for us to separate out the components. Tyler would be working on like getting the fuel tank started. I would be working on the spars and we could be in separate sides of the garage and I'm working on the left and right and he's working on the left and right. And we're, we're tackling two separate components where we weren't interfering with each other. There was nothing where um, like he couldn't work on that without having this component of mine done. It was able to be totally separated. And so because of that, I think it just, it, it felt like it went faster. So even though it was more personally, a little bit more like kind of just monotonous and repetitive, um, it just seemed to go a little bit easier, a little bit faster. There weren't really any of the, uh, again, like modifications that were being made. Um, so again, like with any of the stress of decision-making, about making any changes. We really didn't have any of that with the wings. When now in the fuselage, it's, I feel like it's more exciting because I mean, come on, when, when you see this here next to you and you see the size and especially the sins are down now because we finished doing all the, the uh, match drilling and we have to go and do all the uh, deburring and dimpling and everything. But when the skins were up on both sides, oh man, it was so cool to get to see that. So in that way, it's more exciting, but it's also been 
um, in certain ways more frustrating because there are things where we can't work in tandem. So I can't be sitting here doing the drilling, the match drilling into these brackets here in the firewall uh, through the gussets and the, the channels here and have Tyler like working on the other side because if we end up knocking or getting in each other's way um, and he can't be working on like skipping ahead to the baggage door yet because we don't have the skins attached and so like you have to leave that baggage door attached until you get everything dimpled and, and attached there so it's uh in that way it's it's much more of a sequential process so you have to get this done to then get this done to then get this done um and so for us it's felt a little bit slower and also because again there's a lot more opportunity to make different changes different modifications here so uh if it's anything you're having to figure out on your own that can take a couple days so um like we opted to get a different flap actuator and i had to make a new bracket to mount it it had to get modified it couldn't work with the one that comes from vans and so while we still had the bottom skin off of that um mid fuse portion and it was standing upright i went and worked on doing that but uh, even there, the instructions that came with that flap actuator didn't have exactly like precise detailed measurements for everything. So some of it was figuring it out myself and then trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I make this fit and how do I make this work? Um, and so that there took a couple days and then, okay, we wanted to add the uh, access panels here uh, in the tunnel to be able to get to the uh, fuel pump, this is before we decided to put the filter, instead of putting it in here next to the pump, it's instead going to go forward to the firewall, so we probably didn't really need to do that, but <laughs> we did, thinking that's how we were going to do it initially, and so that took time to go and, okay, now I've got to go and get these panels cut, and then it was, all right, now we're doing uh, the SDS fuel pump, and now how do we set up the mounting um, brackets and the mounting plate to put the fuel pump on so to fit in here in the tunnel so there's just been different things like that and so that that slows you down and so sometimes that can get a little bit frustrating because you're figuring everything out you're figuring it out for yourself you're you know because you're deviating from the instructions there are instructions that come from the different vendors um but sometimes it's not always super detailed or it depends too, like they might have instructions assuming you're putting it in at this point, but you're now trying to put it in at this step in the build. So that's where it's been a little bit more frustrating, but I, I, feel, uh, I feel like it's been so cool to, <laughs> to see it come together in this, uh, in this kit. So everything with the fuselage kit's just been super exciting, but it just, it feels like it's been, uh, been a, a bit slower just with, with, as you work around some of the different changes. Perhaps if we had just uh, done everything straight from the kit, then there'd be people disagreeing with me and they might you know, say, oh, nope, as long as you just go everything with the kit, you're awesome. Um, and so recognizing that, that you know, we are making changes, but there's also again been like tinier, tighter little spots to try and finagle into this <laughs> interesting. Another example even is recognizing that we couldn't finish putting together the fuel tanks um, right away because we hadn't figured out yet what we wanted for everything with our engine and if we were going to need a return line for our a fuel return line for the plane. So we had to like set that aside. It's still not complete. We've now made all of our decisions when we have a little bit more room, when we finish some of the, the stuff here in with the fuselage, then we're gonna go back and pull the, uh, the fuel tanks out and go and finish those. But that was another thing where it was like, ooh, wait a minute, hang on, we need to know if we need to make some uh, modifications even here to be able to have the return line go into both of the tanks. These are the things where it's not in the instructions. So it's just some of the stuff to consider and have to keep in mind uh, as you're making the different changes in your building this part now, especially with the fuselage kit. The wing kit, not so much, 
because like for example choosing to get the zip tips that we got for the lights on the wing tips it wasn't as much of a change there besides what we removed from the kit there was nothing really where it's like in lieu of this do that uh it's a pretty direct swap out with the fuselage it's gotten a little bit more interesting <laughs> If I could go back and talk to myself a year ago, uh, let's see, <laughs> I'd say buy GameStop. <laughs> that would have paid for a lot more of the things for the plane. <laughs> um, okay, but kidding aside, let's see. Uh, I think, really, I wish we'd been able to make some more of our decisions about the different aftermarket stuff that we're adding, the different changes that we're making. I wish we could have made some of those sooner, but really losing Air Venture last year was a big deal. And I think I you know, really appreciate a lot more the opportunity that Air Venture provides, being able to have all the different vendors there side by side and all of other builders that have flown in with their planes. So to be able to walk around and see everybody's uh, completed planes, to go and see all different vendors and go from one to the next and be able to, to touch everything and ask all sorts of questions, not having that, it's there's so much information online, there's so many wonderful resources with the other builders out there, but there's still just something different about um, reading everything online versus actually getting to go and, and see and touch and talk to all the different people in person and again like kind of do a more direct comparison it's it, when you go to one vendor and then the next and it's like right there side by side versus just reading and it, it all depends on what each different uh, vendor has available online and uh, the different people who've commented on the choices that they've made with those different vendors so i wish we'd been able to make some more of these decisions a little bit sooner um, but with the situation being what it was, you know, we did our best with everything that we had available to us online to try and make some of the purchases we've already made. Um, and there's still a couple that we've held off on still until we actually get to go to, uh, Air Venture this year and get to go and see everything in person. Uh, everything from like the, the avionics, that was something we, for the price, for the avionics, really wanting to make sure that this was something um, that like Tyler was happy with, um, since he's the instrument rated pilot and uh, I do not have my license yet. It's important to make sure that like he's happy with the setup and how does he want everything laid out on the panel and uh, with the different vendors having all those wonderful um, mock panels, well not mock, but the, the panel setups there that you can go and, and check out and be able to actually touch everything um, we just figured that one for the price was really worth waiting until he could actually go and see it in person before making our final decision. But even as silly as like the, the grips for the sticks to just make sure again it's something where uh, you're comfortable with it and how it fits and everything in your hand and uh, just how it feels, not wanting it to be something where you buy it without seeing it and then it's like, oh this just doesn't, something about it just doesn't feel right. But there's still other things that obviously we need to go and figure out. So like some of the stuff that we're talking about, lighting, any different lighting for within the cabin, um, for on the exterior, we already have the zip tips, um, but just any additional lighting. So we're gonna go and look at the different options there. And again, anything we're thinking about doing on the interior of the cabin. Ooh, camera mounts, that's something else. I think it'd be really fun. We wanna have some camera mounts that we can um, build into the plane now while everything's um, still in pieces and to be able to set it up and have possibly like power running out to where the mounts would be. Uh, so that's something that we're really interested in trying to figure out while we're there. So if anyone has any suggestions or recommendations for some of those things, um, vendors who we should talk to, your personal suggestions, leave me a message in the comments below. We would love to hear your feedback. Something else I mentioned in the last video was about um, buying tools and how we were still buying tools. The last year, there are still things that we've been buying. Um, I don't feel like it's quite as frequent as the first year. I think the first year, because we were coming from a place of having no tools being our first airplane build, 
and suddenly realizing, oh, okay, yes, you can get by with like one dimple dye set, but having this extra set or having this other set makes it a lot more helpful. And so you kind of start adding little bits here and there. Um, I don't think we've had to purchase or chosen to purchase as much. Um, I know like one thing that we had to purchase in order to fit into some of these places was the, uh, I don't think I have it out here, but it is the uh, drill bit extension with the 90 degree angle on the end of it to be able to reach into some of these uh, tighter places. And I think that's one of the interesting things too with kind of this last year two versus year one is there's been some more and I think especially in the fuselage it's gotten where you have a couple more uh, tricky spots to get into uh, just trying to work around everything like here's a, a perfect example in here right next to me actually when and if you if you see on Instagram and Facebook, you you have seen this picture of me hanging upside down on over the ladder trying to do this. But when we had the the uh, forward side skin up over here, you have to reach over so that the skin goes up to here. You have to reach over and come in with the skin blocking this whole thing, and drill from underneath here. And I'll try and get a close up uh, shot to show you guys later. But you have to match drill holes through this little gusset that's here into the uh, forward edge here of this uh, lingeron while the skin is up. So you have this like very narrow little spot that you have to try and get in there. And you're also, again, trying to reach in from up underneath. And so trying to get, there is no way to have gotten to have just stuck the drill in here Again, because of the flange here, I think this is the F1001, it's M or D, I forget, one, one side's M, one's D, but you can't get, <laughs> the drill just won't fit in there with the skin, with this flange, with the firewall, trying to keep everything at 90 degrees, so uh, that was one tool we had to get, was that, uh, that 90 degree, um, the extension bit for the drill. So that was, that was interesting, but I don't, I'm trying to think. I just, I don't think there's been as many tool purchases uh, this year. It just doesn't seem like it was quite as often, but it's still always good. I mean, again, to have a little bit of a budget set aside, you know what, cause here's the thing, if you end up not buying the tools, that's just money you can put towards something else on the plate. Ooh, and my watch is talking to me. <laughs> Not sure why. <laughs> Another thing I mentioned in the year one video that still rings true, if not more so now in year two, uh, is about the benefit of having so many builder friends. One of our close friends out here, Todd, he's again a couple sections ahead of us. He lives about like 20 minutes away. We've swapped tools. He's happened to go with a lot of the same choices that we've gone with. So uh, having him around to make different suggestions based on what he's experienced. And even if it's not with the mod, just with the build itself, we went over there before to, uh, I think we're borrowing a tool from him and to be able to go and check out his build in person, knowing that he's a couple sections ahead and to be able to go and see in person, oh, okay, wait a minute. So this is uh, the setup and oh, okay, yeah, okay, I see how you did this. And then he can point out when we're there, oh yeah, this was a tricky part, make sure to keep this in mind, or oh, I had a problem with this and I had to call Vans, so here's what they said, and make sure to, to do this when you get to that point. Um, different things like that, but even not having people in person, other friends we have online or who we've made and like we can text back and forth with, it's just the little things that it can help sometimes make it easier. Having some of that, uh, input from your friends and everything who are in a similar spot to you is really helpful to be like, oh, okay, wait, 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 this is what he was talking about. I remember when they told us about this when we were overlooking at Todd's plane or when we were talking online the other day and it's like, okay, okay, all right, let me go back and check that. Let me go call and, and figure it out. It's just, it's 
especially people around that same spot in your build. It's just been so nice to have. <laughs> Let's see, last time I went over my favorite section and uh, I decided not to call it least favorite but most challenging section. And so looking back now at everything, since year one, uh, I think I would say that my favorite has been uh, section 29, uh, working on the uh, side skins, and that my least favorite and most challenging section is probably also section 29 working on the side skin <laughs> so and as confusing as that might be um it's i think it's true because it was my favorite not in terms of like necessarily doing it but again the feeling when you get the side skins here on the front and at the the back and on both sides and you really feel like you're seeing your plane come together. It was so exciting and so cool. But the curve that goes here at the bottom of the skins here at the front, and then I don't think you can really see it very well, but if you can, back here at the back where it's gonna meet up with the, uh, with the tail cone, uh, you gotta do that yourself. <laughs> Those come flat. <laughs> and so you have to go and create a wood block and clamp it down to the table and get vice grips and go and crank that puppy over until you get the bend to be just so and then you have to put it up onto the um like clico it up to see how it fits and does it did you get the curve just right and if not you have to take it down and do it again and uh so with that, it's been really that that was uh, that was that was <laughs> yeah that was trying that was a lot to, to get done um, yeah but again it was so rewarding when we saw it when we saw it finished and everything up here we're still actually in twenty nine like we're not done um, we're still working on it but yeah I I think I would say looking back. Really, this has been, I think, again, the most rewarding and the most challenging uh, section to do out of everything we've done since last year. I think that kind of wraps it up for where, uh, where we're at now versus uh, where we were at the end of year one or even, again, at the very beginning of the build. Um, I think what's great is having, again, even more confidence, um, having even more builder friends to reach out to. Uh, it's exciting to um know about all the different stuff that we still have to learn about and put together but what's oh one thing that's been really great is the uh the videos on eaa uh that they have if you're a member and you can log in they don't put them on youtube but if you log in you can go they have a ton of different videos and uh i'll, I'll look for the link to put down for one like one we saw recently i think it was one of their workshops that they did uh Maybe it was in the spring, but they did one about the engine baffles and it was so great coming again. Like this isn't something that I have a lot of experience doing or Tyler has a lot of experience doing. This is all a learning experience for us too. And the way that the um, speaker went over everything explaining uh, like what it's for, how it works, um, what you want to look for doing the baffle versus the plenum. Um, it was just a really, really good video. So there's different ones like that that they've got there. Uh, again, I'll try and put a link below for that one if I find it again. But uh, there's, even though there's a lot we don't know yet that we're learning currently about like what we're gonna need to do, uh, it's it's just again there's it's so nice having the different resources, having uh, different builder friends, and again like everyone with our EA chapter and everything online. Uh, I don't feel it doesn't feel daunting. So that's what's nice is that even though there's, you know, a little bit of a like gulp, you know, I'm learning all of this for the first time, uh, I feel good knowing that there's, there's a lot out there to help me with this process. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV tent.